presents College Football. The War Eagle sees a battle brewing, and for the Auburn Tigers, it can only mean the tide has rolled in. Head coach Pat Dye has built one of the hardest hitting defenses in the country, led by All-American Tracy Rocker. And now his offensive spark has been rekindled with a healthy Stacey Danley and the leadership of the quarterback, Reggie Slack. One more win, and Auburn goes to the Sugar Bowl with the sweet bragging rights to the SEC. Alabama has already locked up a berth in the Sun Bowl. But in these parts, anyone who bleeds crimson and white knows Bill Curry has never beaten Auburn. To do so, he'll have to rely on linebacker Derek Thomas. The Butkus and Lombardi Award candidate may be the most dominating defensive player in the country. And today, he'll have to stand tall to hold these Tigers. The Sugar Bowl and the pride of the state of Alabama are on the line. It's Auburn and Alabama today on CBS Sports. the greatest rivalries in all of football. We're in Birmingham, Alabama, for what is sure to be one of the highlights of the 1988 football season. They started to arrive on Tuesday. Many celebrated their Thanksgiving here in the parking lot of Legion Field. For them, this game is that important. For the 53rd time, they've gathered to celebrate something very, very special. Welcome to Legion Field for this annual right of fall, the final Southeastern Conference game of the year. The state showdown between the Auburn Tigers and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. The weather is perfect. Sunny skies, temperature in the low 70s, a slight breeze. It's an ideal day for football. Take a look at these standings because it shows you that with a win this afternoon, Auburn gains a share of the title and a ticket to the Sugar Bowl. If the Tigers lose, LSU goes to New Orleans. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt. It's very difficult to put this game in perspective if you're outside the state of Alabama. Some say it exceeds the bounds of sports. I can tell you this. There have been business relationships severed, friendships have broken up, and marriages have ended because of this football game. As one writer said, it's the most interesting ongoing feud since the Hatfield and the McCoys. That may be an exaggeration, but I can tell you this. This is fact. If you live in this state, you support Alabama or you support Auburn. And if you move in, you have to make that choice. Working with me today are analysts from the north, John Dockery. And Doc, how do you see this game? Well, I see it, uh, the feud continuing with a defensive battle, bodies flying all around the field, two of the finest defensive players in the country, bar none. Of course, I speak of Derek Thomas, the linebacker from Alabama, and Tracy Rocker, the defensive lineman from Auburn. How good are they? Well, good enough to be finalists for the Lombardi Award for the best linebacker defensive lineman in the country. Each capable of dismantling an offense by himself. Derek Thomas, is he better than Cornelius Bennett? He may be. 20 sacks this year, 45 for his career. Tracy Rocker, well, an All-American 6'3", 280 pounds of talent and intensity, plays the run in the pass. He sets the tone for the Auburn Tigers. If you're quarterback David Smith, you better hope your short passing game is ready because this is the best defense in the country. The Auburn Tigers give up less than seven points a game. Meantime, Tiger quarterback Reggie Slack will have to have one eye on Derek Thomas and one eye on the football because Derek is liable to line up anywhere and come from anywhere. So if you're a quarterback, you have to be worried about those heat seeking missiles coming after you. <laughs> All right, Doc, it's the state showdown. And everybody in the state of Alabama or anybody involved with this game knows what's at stake. You try to approach this game like any other game, but you, I don't think you can do it because it is such an intense rivalry, you know, between the two schools. And uh, the night before the game, you just lay around. You don't really get a lot of sleep. One thing I can tell you about this game is that no matter how many games you lose or win, the only time, only thing they worry about here is beating Alabama. It's a big fight, cause no matter how, you know how what you think about it, Alabama and Auburn people just don't get along that well. I don't. It's hard to be real close friends to somebody from Auburn. There's a lot at stake uh, coming into this game. You know we. We didn't have anything in our minds but, but winning the game because uh, this is either going to make or break our season. Coming up, we'll take you through the window of time. It's Alabama and Auburn.
It is absolutely a glorious day in the South for this final game in the Southeastern Conference. It's a matchup with a storied past, and for the histrionics, here's James Brown. JB? All right, Timmy, thank you very much. And just to give those outside of the state of Alabama some idea how important this contest, this rivalry between Auburn and Alabama is, Alabama head coach Bill Curry said that the outcome of this rivalry is the kind that the players have to live with from their cradle to their coffin. I'd say that's pretty serious. The Auburn-Alabama rivalry is one that is steeped in tradition, dating back to 1892. Now the series records between these two schools, 30-21-1 in favor of Bama. Before there were automobiles, before the turn of the century, there was Auburn in Alabama. Eventually, the winner of this annual meeting was awarded the coveted Iron Bowl trophy. In the 50s, though, the tide began to control the series behind a man named Bear. Under Bear Bryant, Alabama shut out Auburn seven times, but still there were memorable games. One of the better-known games was the Mud Bowl quarterback by Ken Stabler. Well, the rivalry with, Al with Auburn, of course, was, uh, was a game that Coach Bryant uh, always uh, said we had to win. He didn't have to tell us that. We knew that. No matter what we had done the previous uh, nine or ten games, it was a game that uh, was an absolute must if you played at the University of Alabama. In 1982, in the Bears' last Iron Bowl, the guard will be changed by a little-known freshman from Auburn. Bo Jackson put a new face on this series, doing everything asked of him and more. Finally, going over from one yard out, giving Auburn the win and respectability once again in the series. That just capped off the whole season right there as being super foolish. We didn't care what bowl game that we were going to. We just wanted to beat Bama because Auburn hadn't beat them in 10 years. Here are some other names you may have heard of with Iron Bowl experience. Names like Namath, Starr, and Cornelius Bennett. Two players today, Tracy Rocker and Derek Thomas, are hoping to permanently etch their names on a list that's already an impressive one. So coming up, it's Auburn and Alabama right here on CBS. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, it's the Auburn Tigers versus the Alabama Crimson Tide. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Toyota. There's quality. Who could ask for anything more? U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. And by Coors Light. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. It's the right beer now. Come back to Legion Field. It's Auburn and Alabama. They're out of the tunnel. War Eagle. Here comes Auburn. point from being undefeated playing for the title and the Sugar Bowl Auburn has won four of the last six games between these two and here comes Alabama Roll Tide. Princeton Tide has a record of 7-2 and, and leads this series 30-21-1. This would certainly make their season. Head coach Bill Curry has never beaten the Auburn Tigers. The Iron Bowl, Alabama and Auburn coming up. Take a look at this. And I can take it even a further, a step further. Before last year's 10-0 Auburn win, the five previous games were decided by a total of 12 points. A few more facts. The underdog has won this game three of the past four years. Alabama is the underdog in this one. And even though Auburn has won the last two years, the Tigers haven't won three in a row in this series since Dwight Eisenhower was president of the United States in the 1950s. Auburn won the toss but deferred, so Alabama will receive. Chris Dickerson to kick off. He'll be kicking to Pierre Goode as you look at Bill Curry, and there's a lot of stake at this one. 
number two, Chris Johnson, will be kicking off. So we have a switch already, and Johnson's kick, high end over end kick, will be taken right at the goal line. William Kent across the 20 to the 22-yard line, a 21-yard return. And Tim, the quarterback for Alabama, David Smith, he wins games with his brain, not his arm. The running backs, fullback, Kevin Turner, and David Castillo, the other running back. We'll see a bunch of runners for Alabama. Wide receivers, Greg Payne, Marco Battle, and the tight end is Howard Cross. And he's a good one. They call him high C. First down, ball on the 22. Bama. First play, first sack. Tracy Rocker. His we, fifth sack of the year. We talked about the great defensive players we're going to see in this game. First play of the game, the All-American, Tracy Rocker. Take a look at him coming from his left-end spot here. Comes inside on a quick move. No shot. That's Terrell Chapman trying to block him. Takes down Smith for the sack. Sets the tone for Auburn. A loss of eight, second and 18. Castile and Stewart now. The setbacks in the shotgun for Smith. This is Stewart. He doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. And that Alabama offensive line is going to have their hands full today. The center, Roger Schultz. The guards, possibly Bama's best offensive lineman, Larry Rose. Trent Patterson, the right guard. The tackles, two jumbos, both 300 pounds. John Frew Morgan and Terrell Chapman, the man that was beaten by Tracy Rocker moments ago. Quentin Riggins made that last tackle. He's Auburn's leading tackler. He averages one tackle every three and a half plays. Third down and 10 at the 18. Hill and Stewart of the setbacks. Smith to throw, incomplete. It was intended for Payne. The defensive line for Auburn may be the best in the country. Up front, three senior stars. The nose guard, Benji Rowland. The tackles, All-American Tracy Rocker. You've already seen what he can do. And Ron Stallworth. The outside linebackers, Craig Ogletree and Brian Smith. Inside linebackers, Quentin Riggins and Smokey Hodge. Chris Moore, number five, is on to punt. He's a senior, and he's a good one. And he'll be punting deep to Shane Wasden. He's standing at his own 40-yard line. High wobbly kick. Wasden will take it at the 46. Fair catch it there. And Auburn starts with good field position. 36-yard punt, no return. The Auburn offense, the quarterback, Reggie Slack. The fullback, James Joseph, averages six and a half yards every time he touches the ball. The tailback, Stacy Danley. The wide receivers, Lawyer Tillman, Freddie Wagan. And the tight end, Walter Reeves. First down, Danley, left side, has the corner, and he's across midfield. Into Alabama territory. The offensive line for Auburn, the center, John Hudson. The guards, the freshman sensation, Ed King, Rodney Garner is the other guard. Tackles, Jim Thompson and Rob Selby. It'll be second down and five, the ball on the 49. This Auburn offense averages a whopping 442 yards per game. Danley and Joseph with the setbacks in the eye. Danley, big hole to the 43-yard line. Tackle made there by Derek Thomas. And the other great defensive player we talked about, number 55, Derek Thomas. You see how they have him stacked behind the defensive line? That's so he can make tackles like this. They don't want people getting head-up blocks on Derek Thomas. They want him to use his mobility and athletic ability to make things happen. He is the definition of an impact player. Six foot four, 230 pound senior Derek Thomas out of Miami, Florida. It's first down and 10, the ball on the 43 for Auburn. Out of the eye, Danley and Joseph. And there's a flag, the first penalty of the game. And it's going to be delay a game on the Tigers. the first aid station at 7 a. Rose Smith of Birmingham, the first aid station 7 a. Jimmy Brandt. Our referee today is Jimmy Harper, and he's a good one. So it'll be first down and 15, the ball on the 48-yard line. Alabama gets a break with that penalty. 
Auburn averages more than 31 points a game. Alabama's defense gives up less than half of that. Slack's first pass incomplete. It was intended for Alex Wright. And if Alabama's going to win this game, they have to get some pressure from their defensive line. Willie Wyatt is a nose guard. The tackle's a pair of good ones in Tommy Cole and George Bethune. The outside linebackers we talked about, Derek Thomas, 45 career sacks. Spencer Hammond, the other linebacker. The inside linebackers, Willie Shepard and Keith McCants. Speed is the key to the defense. It is quick. Second and 15, little swing pass. Stanley with plenty of room. Inside the 20. Finally knocked out of bounds by Charles Gardner. Gain of 30. Tim, you mentioned the speed and the quickness of that Alabama defense. One way to neutralize that is what Reggie Slack does right here. Little screen pass to Stacey Danley, set up very well. Take a look at it from the end zone. Watch him. They let the defensive line in. They were suckered. Soft touch on that ball to Danley. Good blocking up front. You see number 67, Ed King getting out in front of the ball carrier and at least screening the defender. First down, this is Joseph to the 15-yard line, knocked out by a whole host of tacklers. Thomas was there along with Gardner. The Alabama defensive backs, the cornerbacks, John Mangum and Kermit Kendrick. The safeties, Lee Osmond and Charles Garner. The freshman starts at safety today for Alabama. Number three. Alabama's given up 48 points in the first quarter this year. Danley and Joseph are the setbacks in the eye on second and seven. Danley tiptoes his way inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Stacy Danley, 6'3", 206-pound sophomore out of Winston, Georgia. You be the linebacker and see if you want to tackle Stacy Danley. He's big. He's a classic eye back. Tall, strong, finishes off his runs, able to cut. Good hit right there. Whoa, what a hit by number 96, Willie Shepard. Danley averages five yards per carry. It's third down and one, the ball on the eight. And the officials stop the clock. Time is out for the officials. This is time out. The game clock is in off right now. Just a minute. So there's a problem with the game clock here at Legion Field. And let me tell you that this is a historical day in this story of rivalry. It marks the first time in memory. That half of the Legion field, 75,000-plus seats, didn't go to Alabama and half to Auburn. Instead, since the Crimson Tide is the home team, all but 10,900 seats go to Alabama. And in a major break from tradition, next year's game will be played at Auburn in Jordan-Hare Stadium. And that's the first time for that. And, Tim, you mentioned the importance of this game. Of course, Auburn wins today. They go to the Sugar Bowl. They share the SEC championship with LSU. Bill Curry on the other side of the ball under pressure. Third and one. Slack, incomplete. The defense held him. An important series for Alabama because they have to set the tone and let people know that they can play with this Auburn team when the top rank in the country and their defense, probably the best defense in the country. Win Lyle is on for Auburn to attempt a 25-yarder. Brian Shulman's the holder. He's 12 of 19 this year. And this one's good. The Auburn Tigers strike first. It's 3-0, Auburn. Auburn took advantage of a short punt, drove to the Alabama 8. Lyle hit a 25-yard field goal. That's where we are. You talk about great defenses. Take a look at Auburn. You're only letting up, allowing 213 yards a game. But more importantly, Tim, under seven points a game to the opposition. Number two, Chris Johnson to kick off for Auburn. And the best defense in the country is standing on the sidelines ready to come on. And again, we have a clock problem. It says there is no time in the game. And it says that Auburn leads 5-0, so that will not sit well with the folks from Alabama. 
you know, we talk about this great defense of Auburn. If there's one weakness, if you look at the clock. And that the was worse. Just, it went to 53 to nothing. <laughs> be a long game. Well, you talk about the defense, and if there's any weakness in this defense, Alabama's going to have to find that under coverage, underneath the linebackers. They have that great pass rush up front with Rocker and Stallworth and company. But underneath coverage, that short passing game is something that might be exploited by Alabama and David Smith. I think Alabama has to pass at least 40 to 50 times in this game. Boy, we've got another good one for you to coming up tomorrow. Arkansas against Miami. Special time. It all starts at 12 o'clock Eastern time here on CBS. What are you liking that one, Doc? Well, I have to like Miami. When you look at Steve Walsh, look at his numbers. Better than Testaverde had when he won the Heisman. What is he? Over 2,500 yards and 28 touchdowns. Steve Walsh is not going to win the Heisman Trophy this year, but certainly he's put up some numbers worthy of them. Arkansas, Miami, special time noon Eastern. That's tomorrow here on CBS. Clock now is at zero. There should be 11 minutes and 25 seconds on it. So right now they're going to keep the time down on the field with the officials. The score is right, 3-0. Auburn over Alabama. Chris Jackson kicks off. Now this will take... 10 to the 30, to the 34-yard line. A 34-yard return. Tim Brant and John Dockery with you. We're in the first quarter, Alabama-Auburn, and the Tigers lead it 3-0. Dennis Wallace made the tackle after a 34-yard return, so the Tide has pretty good field position now. And again, they're going to stop the game, and I think it's with the clock. Well, the scoreboard says it's first down and 13. And that can't be right. And Tim, we talked a little bit about the Alabama offense. You're going to see a lot of backs. We introduced David Castillo and Kevin Turner as the running backs. But if you look closely now, you'll see Murray Hill, number 45 in the game for Alabama. Great speed, a breakaway threat. Cross in motion to give inside. Gain of about three by Kevin Turner. The tackle was made by John Wiley on the right corner. And Larry Rose made a pretty good point. The uh, left guard for Alabama, he said, you know what, we can't just come out and throw entirely. We have to show them that we can play them straight up. It almost becomes a macho thing in this game, the alabama Auburn game. Rose, an All-American, he missed last year's game because of an knee injury between Auburn and Alabama. Second down, call at six. Smith, throwing deep, almost intercepted. It was intended for Todd Richardson, but it was broken up by the entire Auburn secondary. Greg Staples is the man who got a hand on it. And David Smith, by his own admission, will tell you that he does not have the strongest arm in the league. Though he doesn't throw interceptions, as you can see there, 101 without an interception. That ties an Alabama record, but he just has trouble throwing long. He doesn't have a strong arm. He has to throw short and underneath. He's thrown over 1,100 yards, four interceptions, four touchdowns. It's third down and six. Again, Smith to throw. Quick drop, has it outside. Big hole, Stewart. Inside the 40. Robert Stewart. Finally tripped up by Carlo Cheatham. A gain of 25. And the reason Stewart was able to make that grab and to get such a good game was number 41. Take a look at him. He's right in the middle of your screen. Quinton Riggins misjudges, tries to cut underneath for the interception. Watch him right there. Does not get it, and that opens it up for Stewart. Pierre Goode comes into the ball game now for Alabama. He goes to the top of the screen. Richardson to the bottom. Straight ahead goes to tie down to the 35-yard line. Kevin Turner is tripped up. You know, Tim, the David Smith story is an interesting one. You see his leg, and you'll see a huge brace on there. It actually looks more bulky than it is. It's a very light brace. But you talk to Bill Curry, and he uses David Smith's name in the same sentence with Johnny Unitas and Bart Starr. And you and I both looked at him when he said that, but it wasn't really in talent. It was in terms of, of the courage of David Smith to come and play with, with a bum knee after an operation, only three weeks after an operation. Second down and eight. Play action. Smith. Complete at the 11. Greg Payne, number six, made the catch. 
You only need one foot in, 25-yard pickup for the tie. This is a pattern that defensive backs dread. Greg Payne goes down, he breaks towards the middle, and then comes back to the corner. People call it a post corner of Q. The ball is well thrown. You see it doesn't have much on it, but it got there at the right time to the right person. First down at the 11. Castile and Stewart are the setbacks behind Smith. This is Castile inside the 10. Pat Dye was the SEC Coach of the Year last year and this year. The Tigers have won two titles in the last five years. With a win today, they'll win another SEC title. Share it with LSU and head to the Sugar Bowl. And how about Pat Dye when he's describing his defense? He put out his hands and he says it's like a heart with all of the parts functioning in unison. A single heartbeat, his defense. Second and eight, call to nine. High formation for the tie. Smith, with time, he's not very mobile, and he has this one complete to Marco Battle, and he's got just enough time to get it off. He may not be mobile, but he is full under pressure. He knows where to go with the ball. If you notice that time, number 90, Brian Smith, 6'6", 245, the senior linebacker from Alabama, chasing him. Now, Smith is fast. You see David Smith, the quarterback, Right there, nice touch, inbounds, Marco Battle. Curry says he's one of those special people who is driven by things you just cannot explain. He gives confidence to everybody around him. That's three straight completions for Smith. It's third down and four. The ball's at the five. Castile and Stewart in the eye. Play action, cross is open. Now he's covered and Smith will tuck it away. Down to the three-yard line. Carlo Cheetah made the tackle. Along with Smokey Hodge and Howard Cross, the tight end was open for just a second. Tim, you're so right. He was open, but Smith doesn't have that kind of quick arm, that quick wrist motion that can get the ball to his tight end in a hurry. So he wisely just took it in and uh, ran. That will set up a field goal attempt. Philip Doyle comes on to attempt a 20-yard field goal. Chris Moore, the punter, is the holder now. Doyle trying to tie the game. It's up and it's good. We're in the first quarter, and we're deadlocked at three. The clock at Legion Field is now operative. Seven minutes, 44 seconds remain in the first quarter, and Philip Doyle's 20-yarder has deadlocked the game at three. You know, we talked about the great players in this game, and these are the best linebackers in the country. You see Derek Thomas, the Alabama linebacker, flanked by Michael Stonebreak of Notre Dame, Broderick Thomas of Nebraska, Keith DeLong of Tennessee, and Percy Snow of Michigan State. And on numbers alone, you'd have to vote for Derek Thomas. 20 sacks this year, 45 in his career. If you look at him compared to Cornelius Bennett, numbers-wise, he's made more of an impact. Philip Doyle to kick off to Shane Wisden. Instead, it's taken by the up man. Tom Richardson is met at the 18. A 14-yard return. You don't think they take this game seriously? Uh, roll Tide. Take it seriously. Remember at dinner last night? We were there having dinner in this, and uh, people, David Housel, showed us his wedding ring, the SID for Auburn, and inside the wedding ring it had beat Bama. It's a way of life. First down to 19, high formation. Daniel. Absolutely nothing. Willie Shepard got there first, and he had a lot of company from his teammates. It's a swarming defense. That's the sign that Alabama has in their locker room. Swarm to the ball, and that's exactly what they do. Look at that. Look at all those red jerseys. 
Second down and eight, the ball at the 21. Joseph, the lone setback, and they swing it out to Joseph. He's to the 25-yard line. Strong open field tackle made by William Adelong. And James Joseph is one of those unselfish players. He was actually the starting tailback in the beginning of the year, but they needed a fullback, Pat Dye did. They needed a blocker to open the way for Stacy Danley. And they got it with uh, James Joseph volunteering to play fullback. He averages an incredible seven yards per carry. It's third and four at the 25. Danley the lone setback, and he's the ball carrier. First down, Auburn. They'll mark it at the 31-yard line, and they'll move the chains. And as you see Stacy Danley come out of the game, Pat Dye calls him the best-conditioned athlete on the team. We expect to see Danley's already carried five times for 26 yards. He's liable to carry 25 or 30 times this afternoon. In practice, Danley runs every play 25 yards downfield. He now has five carries for 25 yards in this game. First down at the 31, Auburn. This is Joseph, and there's a flag coming from every direction. Derek Thomas got there first, and it may be a face mask. The way he went down, Tim, you would have to think it was a face mask. Every time a player goes down, five yard incidental glass from the face mask on defense. It's a 5 and 15 rule. Incidental is just five yards. You watch the left side of your screen, watch number 55. You'll see. The accidental or incidental right there with his right hand pulls down and actually lets go at the end of it so he only gets the uh, five-yard penalty. He hung on to it a long time, though. But that was in slow motion, Tim. <laughs> Derek Thomas wears a T-shirt under his jersey. It says Sack Demon. Joseph with another first down for the Tigers. Keith McCants made the tackle. McCants. 6'4", 246 pound sophomore just back from a shoulder injury. They compare McCants to Cornelius Pennant out of high school, Proposition 48 guy. So he's actually playing in only his 10th game. And he is, I mean, they'll tell you that McCants gives that an extra dimension at linebacker along with Derek Thomas. As a matter of fact, Pat Dye said that. Keep an eye on McCants. It's not all Derek Thomas. First down at the 43. Slack to throw. Looking for Tillman. At the 11 yard line. A 46 yard gain by Lawyer Tillman. There's a penalty flag somewhere down by the 10 yard line on the field, but that's a classic. Kermit Kendrick had the coverage. The out and up. Got an incidental face mask on the defensive team. They had it on the play five yards. First down. Well, you heard the so penalty. Five more, Doc. What happened here? The reason number 27, Kendrick, is so far behind is lawyer Tillman did an out and then went up. And Kendrick bid on it, something you can't do as a defensive back. Pretty good recovery, but Tillman, 6'4. 223 and the coaches will tell you it's not the fact that he has great speed his timing and his ability to catch the ball is what makes him such a good receiver that's his 17th catch of the year it's first down and goal with the six for auburn stacy daly balls loose alabama's got it handoff by Slack to Danley. And watch right there. That's the man who got his hand in in Garner. It looked like Wyatt, really Wyatt, the nose tackle, got in there and then Gardner came up with the recovery. First down at the 10. The ball's on the 6. Hill to the 4-yard line. Well, he loses yard. He's hit almost immediately by Tracy Rocker. And you know, Tim, we talked to Tracy Rocker on the field yesterday, and I had a sense that maybe there was a little extra rivalry here today because Derek Thomas was talking about, well, you know, I'm the best defensive player in the country, and I'm the best defensive player on the field. And Tracy Rocker had a little bit of an edge, like, wait a minute, I'll show him tomorrow. 
Second down and 12, Castile and Stewart in the eye. Again, the Durham holds as quickly, and Stewart maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, when you talk, Doc, about Tracy Rocker, Pat Dye says he has an external mean streak, and I think it's evident thus far in this game. You know, Quentin Riggins is an intense player, number 41. Watch him right side of your screen. Once every three and a half plays, Quentin Riggins makes a tackle. Now, that's being in the middle of the action. He's the leading tackler, Castile and Stewart in the ball game on third down and ten and stall now in as well for Alabama. Cross in motion. In his own end zone, safety. Ron Stallworth. problems with a quarterback coming off a knee injury and wearing a brace is mobility. Now, David Smith isn't the fastest guy to begin with, and with that brace, you see it on his right knee. The left-handed quarterback has no ability to get away from Ron Stallworth, who quietly has had a great year. Ron Stallworth, and it's 5-3, Auburn. Two field goals, and a safety. And this great rivalry now is 5-3 Tigers. Chris Moore with the free kick. And it's taken by Wasden at the 22. All the way back to the 42-yard line, a 20-yard return. And Shane Wozden has really come out of nowhere to be a contributor to this uh, Auburn football team. A couple of big catches against Georgia a few weeks back, and there, a good return. Only 5'9", 180 pounds, a freshman redshirt from Selma, Alabama. Excellent field position for the Auburn Tigers again. Three minutes, 12 seconds remain in the first period. It's 5-3 Tigers. First down at the 43-yard line. Twin receivers to the bottom of the screen. Stanley is in trouble. Maybe a yard. Great pursuit by the entire Alabama defense. George Thornton got there first and made the tackle. You take a look at the common opponents for these two teams, and you see that LSU is the only team to beat Auburn and, uh, they, and Alabama. And look at what they did by one point each time. Otherwise, the three other opponents were beaten by both these clubs. Auburn is one point from an undefeated season. On second and ten, Slack rolls right, throws across the middle, it's complete. Freddie Wagan takes the ball to the 44-yard line in Alabama territory. Derek Thomas is a guy who can do it all. If you take a look at number 55 right there on your screen, he has the ability to get back in pass coverage. Now he's trying to pick up the quarterback right there and he reacts back a step too late as Slack puts some zip on the ball to Wigan. 12-yard gain makes it first down and 10, the ball at the 44. Vincent Harrison in the ball game along with Stacey Danley in the backfield now for Auburn. This is Danley, big hole left side down to the 36-yard line. Mm -hmm. Keith McCants made the tackle there. Coming up tomorrow night, it's the season premiere of the NBA on CBS. You'll see the two best teams in the league clash. First meeting since last season's championship series. Magic Johnson and the fast-breaking Los Angeles Lakers travel to Detroit to take on the Pistons. That's tomorrow night at a special time, prime time, 8.30 Eastern, right here on CBS Sports. Second down and one at the 35. Right side, Joseph. First down to the 24-yard line. Gain of 11, and they're just knocking them off in big jumps. Take a look at Joseph. Good speed, tailback ability. Watch him cut right there, turn it upfield, and get some good yardage. Coming out of high school, I mean, he was one of the most recruited guys around a great high school All-American, brilliant high school career. Over 4,000 yards and 54 touchdowns. Central High in Phoenix City. Great play. He has 22 yards in this game. Danley and Harris now the setbacks in the eye. First down at the 23. Danley. 
gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more. Right guard. It's interesting, Tim. Pat Dye has wanted to balance his offense much more than it was in the days of the Brent Bullwoods and the Bo Jacksons. This year, he's done an incredible job on it. When you think about only three yards difference between the rushing yardage and the passing yardage for Pat Dye's team. And right now, Reggie Slack is doing exactly that. He's running and throwing the ball with great balance. Second down and 10, the ball up to 23. Harris, the lone setback. Throws the family. He's inside the 15 yard line. 20 seconds remain in the first period. And you look at Reggie Slack, and he's one of those extra dimension quarterbacks. You know, the Major Harris and the Darnell Dickinson and the Randall Cunningham types, the guys who can move around, throw on the run, and make things happen either with their feet or with their arms. That should just about do it. It's been all we expected and then some, and that's the end of the first quarter with the score Auburn 5, Alabama 3. College football will return after this message and a word from your local station. Auburn took advantage of a short Bama punt win Lyle with a 25-yard field goal made it 3-0 Auburn with 11.25 gone in the first period. Clock went out, then Philip Doyle with 7.44 remaining hit a 20-yard field goal to tie the game. But then Ron Stallworth sacked David Smith in the end zone 5-3. That's where we are. After the free kick, this is the seventh play of the drive coming up. Auburn started on their own 43. Joseph and Harris, the setback flag flies, the play's dead. Joseph goes into the end zone, but the play was whistled dead. Dead ball, false guard, illegal movement in the offensive line. Before the ball was snapped. Tim, you mentioned moments ago that Pat Dye's team was one point away from being one of the four unbeatens in college football. They lost to LSU 7-6, fifth game of the year, and last second touchdown by Hudson, or else they'd be like Notre Dame, USC, West Virginia, and Arkansas. Second penalty of the game is third down and six. Danley and Joseph now the setbacks. Slack throws over the middle, and it's complete at the 12-yard line to Freddie Wagan. Should be enough for an Auburn first down. Right now, let's go downstairs. Here's James Brown. JB? All right, Timmy, as you oh mentioned, this God. is the first year that the ticket allotment was not split 50-50 between Auburn and Alabama, but Auburn being a visiting team, only 10,000 tickets. There were some creative types. You're an Auburn graduate. How did you get in the game without being a part of the 10,900? Well, I haven't missed the game since 1972, so I decided to buy season tickets to make sure I could get to the game, but I bought season tickets to the University of Alabama. How do you cheer for your team, very uh, quietly or loudly in this Alabama section? Uh, I'm pretty subdued, but I still cheer. <laughs> All right, a diehard fan. Let's go back up to Timmy. Stanley doesn't have much room around the outside. I'll tell you what, that's some enterprising. Auburn guy buying Alabama season tickets to get into this one game. The tackle was made by John Mangum. Fairly expensive, uh, but creative. <laughs> Tell us about the game thus far, Doc. Well, you look at uh, Reggie Slack, 5 of 7, good possession passes, nice touch, 103 yards. Stallworth with the safety. You look at all the total yards, Auburn is dominating over 100 yards more than Alabama. And the Tide's in trouble here. It's second down and eight. The ball is at 10. Slack now 6 of 8 for 110 yards in the passing department. Gives this one to Danley. Danley pushes the pile ahead. To the six. Slack has hit his last five passes. He's got the hot hand. In a four. And you might want to keep an eye on that offensive line. Not a dominating offensive line for Auburn, but number 67, Ed King, the left guard, the freshman, 6'4, 270 pounds. He is, and I quote Pat Dye, he may be the best athlete with the most potential that I've ever had at Auburn. And we said to him, what about Bo Jackson? He said, including Bo Jackson. That line averages 6'4", 263 pounds. It's third down and four, the ball on the six. Daniel and Joseph with the setback. Slack throws underneath incomplete. It was intended for Freddie Wagan. And again, the Alabama defense holds fast. And one up. 
Slack did not look to his secondary receiver. Wagan was covered over the middle. Linebackers were right there. As a matter of fact, a couple of them. He didn't look off and try to find a secondary receiver. Win Lyle comes on to attempt a 23-yard field goal. He's already made a 25-yarder. Brian Schulman's the holder. High snap. But the kick is good. So the Alabama defense prevents more damage. That's 8-3. Auburn. Birmingham skyline on a magnificent day in the south. It's 8-3 Auburn with 13.02 remaining in the half. A lot of talk about the Heisman. Who do you like, John Dockery? Well, I'd say you'd have to go left to right across Aikman. Well, probably played himself out of it. Sanders in the middle. What numbers over 200 yards rushing a game? He's approaching Marcus Allen's record. And Rodney Pete, ooh, a great game for Rodney Pete. Here's who I take. I say the best player in college football this year is Sanders, Barry Sanders, for the numbers that he's put up. I agree with you. Chris Johnson on to kick for Auburn. Pierre Good and William Kent are deep to the tie. Kent will take a one-yard deep to the end zone. He needs a block. He doesn't get it. Returns it to the 18-yard line. So a 19-yard return. The tackle was made by Wayne Bisma. And Bilesma makes a pretty good open field tackle. Has Alabama been any good for the last 60, 65 years or so? Yes, they have. The best winning percentage in major college football. Look at that. The NCAA best. 75%. Three out of four times Alabama wins. Whoa. First down, Alabama, the ball on the 18. And this offense has to take some of the pressure off its defense. Smith with a long count. Now gives straight ahead to Castile. And Auburn wasn't fooled. Pickup of about two. Tim, that's a large order because they're playing against the best defense in the country in Auburn, ranked number one in scoring defense, number one in total yardage against. This is an outstanding, and their front three, who knows, Stallworth, Roland, and Rocker, certainly one of the best three in the entire country. That last tackle was made by David Rocker, a sophomore, Tracy's younger brother. Second down and seven, ball on the 21. Smith on the waggle. Throws, and it's complete. First down, tied. Marco Battle takes it out of bounds on the 27-yard line. Well, maybe it's not a first down. It's awfully close, depending on the mark. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. One of the great southern stadiums. They call it the football capital of the world. Tim Brandt and John Dockery with you. Our Auburn leads Alabama 8-3 with 12 minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the half. The mark brings them just about a yard shy. Not even that. It'll be third down and about a foot. Castillo and Stewart are the running backs. Instead, they go straight ahead with the quarterback sneak. And Smith will be close. And one of the reasons they'll try that is their best offensive lineman is number 74, Larry, Larry Rose, the senior. So they try to run behind him for the first down. Rose is 284 pounds, started as a freshman. He's out of Gazden, Alabama. Missed last year's Auburn game. He's a daddy of two. Larry Rose has two daughters. Takes a good man to have daughters. <laughs> One was born after the Florida game a couple of years back, and the second was born after the Georgia game. I have two daughters. I can appreciate that. First down tied. But Tim, you mentioned Larry Rose. When we talked to him a couple of days ago down in Tuscaloosa, he was the one that's suggesting, well, maybe this Auburn team is a little overconfident. Maybe they're not giving us the respect we deserve. First down, the ball on the 29. The lone setback is Stewart. Smith, with pressure, has this ball batted by big number 90, Brian Smith. And what a game Brian Smith had against Georgia a few weeks back, pressuring the quarterback sacks. That time, he comes in, and you take a look at number 90. He's 6 feet 6 inches tall, and when he goes up, He's probably about 10 feet in the air. When you figure he raises his arm, imagine yourself the quarterback. It's like throwing out of a hole right there. Great timing by Brian Smith. Second down and 10 for Alabama. 
Smith on the option. To the 31-yard line. Tackle made by Quentin Riggins. You know, I can't get over that, Doc. I do the can I. Riggins is the leading tackler, came into this game with more than 106 tackles, and they say he averages a tackle every three and a half downs, so at least one a series. And, you know, they talk about him as being the major factor in this defense coming together. Of course, we all remember Andre Bruce. They lost him, but certainly Tracy Rocker and, and Riggins and Hodge and Smith have taken up the slack. Third down and eight. Castile in motion. Smith drills this one, and it's complete to Payne. First down, Alabama at the 42-yard line. That's what David Smith does best, the short, quick passing game. Car Carlo Cheatham is on the defense. Take a look at it. On the coverage. And it's Greg Payne, just a simple out throw. Well executed for the first down. A gain of 11 moves the ball to the 42-yard line. Again, it's Hill and Stewart in the eye formation. Play action. Smith throws underneath the hill, and he can't handle it. Ball hit him in the hands, then hit him in the face mask, and he dropped it. Well, they call him Thrill Hill. But I'm sure he was named Thrill Hill, not because of thrills like that, but what he's done on the good side of the ledger. Thrill Hill, who has 4-3-5 speed and can make things happen, but he's not much of a pass receiver. He's only caught two balls for three yards this year, so that time you can see that he's not much out of the backfield. Drop that ball. It'll bring up second down and 10. Again, it's Castillo and Stewart in the backfield. Castillo has a hole after the 47-yard line, and that's where Quentin Riggins makes the tackle. Riggins is everywhere. Coming up at halftime, the Prudential College Football Report with James Brown. JB's now getting squared away and getting his position and getting all comfortable. So we'll join James Brown at halftime. He's got a great feature for you on a young man out west by the name of Doc Lee. And you don't want to miss that because it is something. Third down and five, the ball on the 47. Russell in motion. Again, it's the short drop back, and they throw underneath to Lamont Russell, and it's complete. First down, Alabama. This is what David Smith talked about, frustrating that Auburn defense. They love to make the big play. Rhythm passes, getting rid of the ball quickly, going underneath. That's what he's doing right now. David Smith is finding his rhythm. A gain of 10, first down tied. Marco Battle comes to the bottom of the screen, Payne to the top. Turner and Ken to the setbacks. They now go to the eye. Again, there's play action. Payne's open. There's the pass. It's complete. Gain of 21 to Greg Payne. If you look at the Auburn defense, Carlo Cheatham and Shane Chan Morris are just playing soft. And he's finding those soft underbellies. And, and look at the ball wobble, though. Not a great arm, just good timing, good placement. Payne now has three catches, 56 yards. It's first down, Alabama at the 22. Hill to the 20-yard line. Murray Hill bruised his back against LSU. He averages 11 yards per carry in high school, scored 18 touchdowns, and he's been very successful with his 4-3 speed here on the college level. Certainly has him when you look at his per carry average. It's over six yards a carry. But he's only 5'7", 169. A little bit of a mismatch with Ron Stoller at 260 who took him down that last time. Second down and eight. Underneath the high cross. Howard Cross lunges to the 11. Underneath the cross. Quentin Riggins and Smokey Hodge on the coverage here. Just a nice touch to Howard Cross coming across the middle. But one of the reasons that worked is Murray Hill, the little back, got a good block on Craig Ogletree, the linebacker on the rush. First down at the 11. Hill in 
inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Tracy Rocker made the tackle there. Rocker had 11 tackles, three hurries, and broke up a pass against Georgia. He was simply spectacular. Four years of brilliance. That's what Tracy Rocker has been for the Auburn Tigers. This has been a magnificent drive by David Smith. Look at this, 13 plays, 74 yards, almost five minutes off the clock. Castillo and Stewart in the backfield for Smith. Second down and eight, the ball at the seven. Smith, underneath dangerous pass, almost picked off by Smokey Hodge. Oh boy, that one was close. Nice reaction by Smokey Highs, number 56, as we take a look at it. He's right in the middle of your screen, backing up, reading the quarterback. And watch his reaction here. Actually had a chance and an interception, but couldn't hold on to the ball. Smith now, 8 for 13, 110 yards. It's third down and six. Bama's made three third down conversions on this drive. Smith to throw, double pump, throws it underneath, intercepted. Quentin Riggins taken out of bounds on the 12-yard line. Defensive backs and linebackers work every day in practice on something called a tip drill, so that when balls bounce around like this, you're able to pick them off. Watch Quentin Riggins. See him in the bottom of your screen, number 41. He's the man that eventually gets the interception. The ball is intended for Lamond Russell. Right there, there's good defensive coverage by Shan Morris. The ball comes up in the air, and Quentin Riggins makes the interception. Big turnover, first down at the 12. Daniel carries tacklers after the 19-yard line. You mentioned a big turnover because every football game is an ebb and flow to him. And that time, Alabama had terrific momentum on a long drive before that interception snuffed out the drive for David Smith. He'll bring up second down and three. The ball on the 19. This is Joseph. Across the 20 to the 21-yard line, Keith McCants makes the tackle there. Hey, it's now time to present this week's Toyota Loader Leadership Award to team players who have been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners are Shane Wasden from Auburn. Shane is a liberal arts major from Selma, Alabama, and Chris Moore from Alabama. Chris is a criminal justice major from Thompson, Georgia. Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund in their names. Third down and one, the ball on the 21 for Alden. James Joseph. And there is a flag at the 20-yard line. Joseph and Frank Dillard, flag on the play. He's close to first down yardage. Lee Osmond made the tackle along with William Amalong. Violation of the neutral zone. Offside. Offside Alabama. And if you don't hear as much cheering for Auburn, the reason being is they only have, as you mentioned, 10,900 seats here. Alabama has a majority. Bill Curry whew, doesn't like the call. But a fringe benefit of that long drive, David Smith's long drive, was to give his defense a chance to rest. And they've been playing well today, Alabama's defense has. First down, Tigers. At the 26, James Joseph. Pulls his way out to the 28-yard line. Joseph at left guard. He gained up two yards. Boy, you had a good look at Bill Curry just a second ago. In his second year as head coach at Alabama, and he's been under some pressure. His record is 14-7. and seven. His overall record as a head coach, 45-50-4. But he's 0-7 against Pat Dye and Auburn, and that doesn't sit well in this part of the country. Second down and eight. The ball at the 28. And I believe Alabama wants a timeout. They do. So that'll give time for Reggie Slack to regroup with Pat Dye. 
and it'll give time for the Alabama defense to catch their breath. We'll be back. And I to mention the Alabama... We told you at the beginning of this game it would be a defensive struggle. It has been. 546 remaining in the half. When you talk about defensive players, yeah, there's a lot of talk in the Jefferson County area about who's better. Look at this. 45 sacks for Derek Thomas, 15 for Bennett in their career, but there's more to play linebacker than just sacks. James Joseph straight ahead for a couple. I still think Cornelius Joseph Bennett is the better player. I think he's stronger, I think he's quicker, but I think Derek Thomas, of course, an outstanding athlete, and he has shattered every statistic that Cornelius Bennett ever had at Alabama. I would agree that uh, Bennett is the stronger of the players and a harder hitter, but if you want impact, Certainly, Derek Thomas is the man that can make it happen. He's got incredible speed and quickness, gets to the quarterback, and loves to play the game. Third down and three for Auburn. Stacey Danley, left side. Great balance across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Emily and the guard. Sunday, the afternoon kicks off here on CBS with the NFL today at 12.30. We have Phoenix at Philadelphia. One of the games, it's doubleheader day. Green Bay at Chicago. Tampa Bay or Atlanta in your area? These are all game one of our doubleheader day on CBS. Then the late games, the Rams at Denver, 4 o'clock Eastern time, or San Francisco against San Diego. Well, the Rams at Denver, both those teams need wins to stay in their division races. First down and 10 here at the 36-yard line for Auburn. Play action, Reggie Slack. Look at the way game, way game's open. At the 43 and a half yard line, knocked out of bounds by Keith McCann. Derek Thomas is a man who loves to rush the quarterback. Take a look at him right here. Delays, delays, and then he comes on the quarterback. Whew, after he threw the ball, lets him have it. Ooh, with a little under the chin action at the end of it. The reason he didn't rush right away, Tim, was that he had some pass responsibility with the back out of the backfield. It'll be second down and three, the ball at the 43. Danley. And there is a flag at the line of scrimmage. Tackle was made by Willie Shepard. Slack now, 7 of 10 for 118 yards. One thing we can look for, John, is he's thrown at least one interception in eight of the 10 games they've played this year. We got a violation of neutral zone on the offensive team moving into the neutral zone during the snap. So that'll move the Tigers back. You know, Tim, you talk about Reggie Slack, and one of the things that uh, anyone looks at in terms of statistics is the ratio of touchdowns to interceptions, and uh, Reggie Slack has thrown well, one less touchdown than interceptions. There you see 10 interceptions on the year. If there's a weakness, that would be one of them throwing interceptions. Pat Sullivan has worked on that, though. He's got a great percentage, 61% passing. That's the third penalty of the game against Auburn, 15 yards. Alabama also has three. It's second down and eight at the 38. Goes it to Harris in the eye. Play action for Slack. A lot of pressure throws underneath. It's complete. At the 39-yard line, Willie Shepard made the tackle on Greg Taylor. And he made the tackle with Ventrice Davis, number 47, in his face. Watch Reggie Slack. Everyone talks about his cool under pressure. See right there, 47 is in, yet he waits, he waits for the completion. Third down and seven from the 39. Four wide receivers for Slack. Three-step drop throws underneath. And it'll be short of a first down. It's complete to Greg Taylor. Auburn will have to punt, but there is a flag. And I believe it's going to be against the Tigers. During the play, holding in the offensive line, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down. So they move them back. And Alabama now brings in his nickel package.
And they force Reggie Slack into a position that Pat Dye is uncomfortable with, and that's throwing the ball long downfield. Shane Wasden, number eight, is a man to watch in this spot. Third down and 17 for Slack. Backside pressure underneath. And it's not going to be enough for the first down. Lawyer Tillman is stopped at the 34-yard line. And you may say to yourself, why in the world did they do that? They wanted Lawyer Tillman catching the ball underneath and hopefully running for some good yardage. No way against this Alabama defense today. Boy, what a defensive stand by the tie. McCants and Gilbert made the tackle. Auburn has to punt. Brian Schulman gets a wobbler that's taken at the 25 by Hill. He stutter steps up across the 35. They'll mark it at the 36-yard line. A 41-yard punt, 9-yard return, 221 remaining in the first half. It's 8-3, Auburn. Rogers. It's 8-3, Auburn, with 221 remaining in the half. And for Auburn, this game is very meaningful. A share of the SEC crown and a trip to the Sugar Bowl against Florida State, the Sun Bowl. John Hancock, Sun Bowl, Army versus Alabama. The Cotton Bowl, Arkansas versus UCLA. The Rose Bowl, USC versus Michigan. The Orange Bowl, number six, Nebraska versus number three, Miami. Of course, Miami plays Arkansas tomorrow. The Gator Bowl, Georgia versus Michigan State, the Citrus. Clemson versus Oklahoma, and finally the Fiesta. West Virginia unbeaten versus Notre Dame. Also unbeaten at the moment. First down, Alabama at the 36. Smith on the play action. Close underneath. He's got pain to the 44-yard line. Over the linebackers underneath the secondary. Clock stops at 2-11 while they move the chains. Gain of 20. And we talked about a philosophy coming in. Throw under the linebacker coverage. Well, defensive backs are playing soft. I don't know exactly why. He's not a deep threat, David Smith, and his receivers are yet. They're giving an awful lot of room. Payne comes to the bottom of the screen. Battle of the top. Stewart and Kent now are the setbacks. And first down is the 45. Smith on the waggle. Throws to the sidelines and overthrows. Marco Battles. for Marco Battles. Tomorrow on CBS Sports, you'll see two teams battling to stay in the national title race. The eighth-ranked Cotton Bowl-bound Arkansas Razorbacks put their unbeaten 10-0 record on the line against Jimmy Johnson and the third-ranked Hurricanes of Miami. That's tomorrow at a special time, noon Eastern, right here on CBS Sports. Second and 10 at the 45. Play action. Smith incomplete. Intended for Lamar Russell. You mentioned that game tomorrow. Arkansas, one of the four unbeaten teams in the country. Boy, they'll have their hands full against Jimmy Johnson, Miami. Miami out to prove something. Of course, they lost by one point to Notre Dame, and that dropped them down. They believe they are the best team in the nation. Wayne Shaw comes back into the ball game now for Alabama. He joins Kent in the backfield. Alabama started this drive with the best field position of the day. It's third down and 10, the ball on the 45. They don't want to squander this, but they do. Oh, boy, everybody came flying through. Ron Stallworth got their first big number 92. That's his second awesome. sack of the day. He now has seven on the year. And that's more than Tracy Rocker. You know, everybody talks about Tracy Rocker, but watch number 92 on the stunt. Right there, comes on the inside on the end tackle game, untouched to make the sack, Ron Stallworth. He's a big man. He wears a size 16 shoe, size 8 helmet. He's a big one. This. All right, back here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, coming up for you on a pre- I tell you, you have to be strong just to lift it. Chris Moore, his second punt of the day. First one was 36 yards. Shane Wisden is deep for the Tigers. This ball will go out of bounds inside the 20. We'll see where they mark it. Auburn will take over first and 10. They'll mark it at the 15. Tomorrow night, it's the season premiere of the NBA on CBS. You'll see the two best teams in the league. It's the L.A. Lakers against the Detroit Pistons. That's tomorrow night at a special time, prime time, 8.30 Eastern, right here on CBS Sports. And a chance to see Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in his last season, or so he says. I know he said it before, but 
This is probably the last for the big man. That 37-yard punt gives Auburn first down at the 15. And the defense is all over Stacey Danley. Tommy Cole got there first. Did you hear the whistles blowing? Almost as if there was a warning. You're getting a little bit too rambunctious on defense. Settle down. Well, we talked at the top of the show about this being a defensive struggle. We have two of the finest players in the country. We talked about Derek Thomas. And uh, there he is right there holding hands with his buddies. That sense of unity that Bill uh, Curry wants to instill in his Alabama team. Second down and nine at the 16. Danley cracks heads at the 18. And Danley's slow getting up. Danley is not, not getting up. moving. Spencer Hammond made the hit, and it was a dandy. You don't hear much about Spencer Hammond, 6'2", 212 pounds. They call him the bandit. Plays that strong side linebacker position. First-year starter, consistent, started every game. That time, boy, did he put a hit on Danley. Head-to-head, -head, helmet to helmet. Whoa. Well, we hope that... Stacy Danley is okay. And I hope you don't misunderstand us, but that was one whale of a tackle by Spencer Hammond. Danley, 15 carries, 55 yards this afternoon, and they're tending to him. You know, one of the things about Derek Thomas, people talk about, if you run straight at him, if you get a helmet in his uh, chest, that he isn't as, oh, he also held him off a little bit by holding him. You see his hands in there, Walter Reeves? He had his hands inside and was actually holding Derek Thomas, who was trying to get rid of him. But that's a philosophy, offensive philosophy. You've got a great linebacker like a Derek, Derek Thomas or a Lawrence Taylor or an Andre Tippett. You run straight at them to neutralize them. Auburn's been doing that today. Got the smell and salt going to Stacey Danley. You could see they hit helmet to helmet. Hammond, 35 tackles on the year. And this was perhaps his most physical. A look at a concerned Pat Dye, and we'll be back. With 39 seconds remaining in the half, and Stacy Danley is now up, and this was the hit. Watch Spencer Hammond right here with the hit. The impact, look at that, it snapped Hammond's chin strap open. That was an eight on the Richter scale. Good to see Danley off. It appeared as though that he might have been knocked down. They got the smelling salts. He walked off under his own power. Under 20 seconds to play in the first half. Harrison Joseph for the setbacks in the aisle, third down and six. This is James Joseph. Joseph Met by Willie Shepard and Derek Thomas. And that will be the last play. Unless they stop the clock, and they do. Another reminder coming up. Prudential College Football Report with James Brown. And you don't want to miss the story on Dot Lee. Six seconds remain in the first half. Auburn leads 8-3. There has not been a touchdown scored. It's fourth down and three. The ball on the 22 for Auburn. Doc, what do you do here? An interesting situation, obviously, if Auburn going to punt away which they seem to they see showman the punter number one coming on to the field you must go for the block bill curry hopes for the block maybe he'll, maybe he'll roll on in the end zone for a touchdown so you're going to see alabama coming after this ball this is the second punt coming up for showman first was 41 yards alabama still has a timeout remaining here they come this is a high kick that will hit at the 30 go down inside the 25 and that ends the half so that's the end of the first half with a score Auburn 8, Alabama 3. James Brown will be back with a college football report after this message in a word. College football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Norelco Lift and Cut Shavers. We made close comfortable. Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. And by the heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. The Iron Bowl, we're just about set for the second half. Alabama and Auburn, they put 15 minutes back up on the scoreboard. Auburn leads 8-3 to three over Alabama. As we begin the third period, Philip Doyle is ready to kick off for the Crimson Tide. Shane Wasden is deep for Auburn. 
This kick is drilled. Six yards back in the end zone, and Washington will down it. Touchback, they'll bring it out to the 20. And the difference in this game is probably the interception that David Smith threw, but simply stated also, Alabama has not been able to run the ball. Only nine yards rushing. Auburn, 89 yards rushing. Time of possession, Auburn held the ball for over 17 minutes. Alabama, a little under 13 minutes. Alabama's defense just barely gets on the field. First down and 20. Joseph across the 20 to the 23-yard line. And up-tempo, hurry-up offense. Auburn almost got a playoff without a defense in front of them. Tackle made by Willie Shepard. Some, sometimes you look for any edge you can get, but look at this game. It's 8-3. to three. We're in the second half. A touchdown by Alabama, they would be winning in the extra point. They'd be winning 10-8. to eight. This game is in the balance. A defensive struggle for you folks who appreciate fine defensive football. We have it here the day after Thanksgiving. Harrison Joseph with the setbacks in the eyes. Second down and 6-24 for Auburn. This is Joseph. To the 24. Breaks the tackle. Ball is loose and a flag is down. And we may have a face mask. Joseph at right end, playing on the play. Face mask are holding. McCants and Shepard made the tackle. I believe it'll be a face mask, though, Doc. Got an incidental face mask. Rasmussen face mask. Defensive team, five-yard penalty to be a first down. Face mask penalty against Alabama. Sometimes as a defensive player, you know, you're just trying to grab anything you can. A defensive player is told to grab whatever he can. If you watch the left side of your screen and look at number 98, Willie Wyatt, you'll see him grab the face mask for a moment. Well, it's first down and 10. The ball at the 38. Slack. Play action. As this one incomplete, the ball was just dropped. Walter Reeves... The tight end was the guy who was intended to make the catch, but he just dropped it. And Pat Dye Marines. says Reeves is the best tight end in the country. He may be, had that one. Yeah, he may be exaggerating a little bit there. He's really talking about Reeves' blocking ability. You know, in certain situations, he's made big catches for Auburn, but he's not a dynamic pass receiver by any stretch. Strictly a blocker on a team that averages 32 points a game. John, there is a flag. This time they move Auburn back. So it'll be first down and 25. The ball on the 17. 8-3 to three is our score. It has been a defensive struggle. And you saw Pat Dye there asking what it was. It might have been ineligible man downfield. Tillman at the bottom of the screen. Way down to the top. Slack to throw. Here comes the pressure. Slack avoids the pressure and throws it out of bounds. Pressure from number 59, George Bethune there, and that's the extra dimension that Reggie Slack has. David Smith, if he were back in that situation, would have been sacked close to the goal line, but instead Reggie Slack escapes the rush and uh, throws the ball away for an incompletion. He is cool, he's calm, he's thrown for over 2,000 yards, nine touchdowns. This has been a pretty good effort by the Alabama defense. And look at the leading tacklers, McCants, Derek Thomas in on seven, Gilbert is in on six. And Gilbert, of course, led the team in tackles a couple of years ago, but hasn't played in a few games with a pulled groin muscle, playing well today. Third down and 25 for Slack. Pressure from Thomas throws this one away, game complete. To the 47 yard line. Finally run out of bounds by Charles Gardner. Gain of 28. And you have to wonder where Gardner was, number three. He's a freshman. He hasn't started that often. He is an outstanding talent. But on this play, Reggie Slack rolls to get away from the pressure. Still, he gets pressure. See Derek Thomas coming at him right now. But Wagant is wide open. No one within 15 yards of him. Finally, see late right there, number three, Charles Garner, the freshman, comes in. Looked like a broken coverage. Third and 25 to allow that pass is absurd. First down and 10 here. Slack's going deep. Intercepted by Kermit Kendrick. Great 
defensive play by the senior from Meridian, Mississippi. As an old defensive back, let me tell you something, that Kermit Kendrick was lucky that time because Alexander Wright had him beaten. The ball was underthrown. Then he made great ball reaction in hands to come up with that interception. But earlier, had that ball been thrown out and over by Reggie Slack, that would have been a big completion, possibly even a touchdown. So the Alabama defense bails him out again. First down at the 11. Castillo, right side to the 17-yard line. Nice cutback. The tackle was made by Craig Ogletree and Benji Rowland. An absolutely glorious day at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Tim Brant and John Dockery with you on this day after Thanksgiving and Auburn leads Alabama 8-3. It's second and three, the ball on the 18. William Kent now in the backfield with Kevin Turner for Alabama. Payne in motion. Smith is looking for Payne, drills it, and the catch is somehow made to the 33-yard line. Shan Morris made the tackle. But the gain was 16. And Shan Morris, you saw him jump up and down after that play because number 20, Shan Morris, thought he had enough time to get to that ball. We've mentioned that David Smith does not have much velocity on his ball, but he's smart, though. See him wait, wait. He throws against the grain. Watch number 20 come in. He thought he could get to that ball, but he couldn't. Payne makes the reception for the first down. Fifth catch of the day for Payne. Kent and Turner, the setbacks. And there's a flag thrown. Kent loses a couple of yards on that play. Again, Quentin Riggins made the tackle for Auburn. We'll wait and see what the flag is. During the run, clipping on the offensive team, 15-yard penalty. This game is some kind of important. It will determine which team in the SEC goes to the Sugar Bowl. If Auburn wins... They gain a share of the lead with LSU, a share of the title, and the ticket to New Orleans. And the reason they have a ticket to New Orleans is that the New Orleans, the, uh, the Sugar Bowl, picks the highest ranked team, even though Auburn lost to LSU head-to-head. -head. A lot of people think that's unfair. That's the way it will be. Fifth penalty for Alabama. It'll be first down and 25. on the play action. Throws this one and it's intercepted. Greg Staples with the interception. And Auburn will have the football. It was intended for Payne. Again, when you have a quarterback that does not have a strong arm, it gives you reaction time. This time, Greg Staples, number 45, just reacts on the ball. David Smith is looking all the way, all the way, and then he just reacts. The ball has no zip. Staples comes up with the interception. Second interception for Smith this afternoon. He also has a safety. First down at the 30 for Auburn. Joseph and Vincent Harris are the setbacks in the eye. Slack now feels the backside pressure. Drops it to Joseph. Inside the 20s of the 19-yard line, James Joseph. 11-yard gain, and there's a flag, and it's going to be against Auburn. And Pat Dye is furious. So is Reggie Slack. He better be careful. Or he'll get another one. Pass is ruled out of bounds before he threw the ball. Second down. Second down. The pressure comes from Derek Thomas. Derek Thomas from the far side of the field shows great mobility and speed. We've already talked about it. You'll see Derek Thomas. See him running down the quarterback here, and they said he was out of bounds when he threw that ball. Hard to see from that angle. It'll be second down and 16. 
Black to throw again, and here comes Thomas at his feet, and he gets the sack. Derek Thomas doing what he has done 45 other times in his career, 20 other times this year. He steps over the running back, Vincent Harris, number 21, trying to block him, comes over him, keeps his balance, and then just rolls in and grabs on to Reggie Slack for, this, for the sack. It's a loss of 11. It'll be third down and 27. Four wide receivers for the Tigers. Again, there's pressure. Incomplete. And again, there's a flag all the way across this other side of the field. And it's going to be against Auburn. Dead ball before the snap. Delay of the game on offensive team. It is so loud in Legion Field, the players couldn't hear the whistle before the snap for delay a game. And for the first time, we mentioned it before, there's an imbalance of fan support. 65,000 here for Alabama, a mere 10,900 for Auburn. First time in memory that's happened. In the past, they split the ticket allotment right down the middle. Half to Alabama, half to Auburn. Third down and 32. Slack is putting this one up deep. Incomplete. Lee Osmond was there on the coverage. It was intended for lawyer Tillman. And this whole stadium's rocking. Over the punt. High spiraling punt. It'll hit at the 16 and go out of bounds at the 11. So Alabama will be backed up again. A 41 yard punt. 10 11 remaining third period. It's 8 3. Auburn. With Stacy Danley out of the ball game for Auburn in that last series, the Tigers passed the ball four times, ran only once. Let's get an update now from James Brown. JB, how's Stacy Danley? All right, Timmy, as you mentioned, he was a big part of the Auburn offense in the first half. He sustained a double whammy. He was knocked out, as you and John accurately indicated. He also sustained a pinched nerve on his left shoulder. He's on the sidelines. He's running up and down. The doctor said it'll be up to him. Let's go back upstairs to Tim. Hey, JB, if that's the case, I suspect we'll see him. First down, Alabama, the ball on the 11. Smith, incomplete. It was intended for Marco Battle, and Carlo Cheatham was the defensive back in the area. You know, you talk about injured players like Stacy Dantley and what they need to their, uh, mean to their offense. What about Bobby Humphrey being lost to this Alabama offense all year long? The man that was, before the season started, they talked about in Heisman Trophy terms. What a great running back. He really has affected this uh, offense for Alabama. And they lost Gene Jones, a man who played tailback in front of Humphrey before moving to defense. Second down and 10, the ball on the 11. William Kent straight ahead to the 10-yard line. There's not much offense happening right now for the Crimson Tide. Quentin Riggins made the tackle, and he's got a bundle of tackles this afternoon. Riggins made the tackle. Quentin Riggins is the man that makes things happen. A major factor, as I mentioned. Watch him right here. Plays off the blocker. He's like a matador getting rid of him, and then gets low the way you should as a linebacker. Comes up underneath the ball carrier for the tackle. Third down and nine now at the 12. Turner and Castile in the eye. Backside pressure, ball's loose. Alabama gets it back. Again, it was Ron Stallworth who applied the pressure for Auburn. Fourth sack of the day for the Tigers. Again, it was David Smith's lack of mobility to get away. I'm surprised he didn't see Ron Stallworth coming. Take a look at it right here. Now, he's a left-handed quarterback, so he's coming from his open side. 
yet David Smith made no move to try to escape from Ron Stoller. Moore now standing almost at the back line. Oh, and he gets off a whale of a punt. Wisden has to go down on it after he mucked it. And what a break for Alabama. A 57-yard punt for Chris Moore. It's that kind of game. Give you. Give your. Eight minutes and 46 seconds remain in the third period of play from Legion Field. Auburn continues to lead Alabama 8-3 to three in a game that has just been spectacular defensively. But you get the feeling that Alabama's offense better give this defense some help. Joseph now the key man with Danley out. 10 carries, 42 yards for Auburn. First down at the 39. Here's Joseph. To the 40-yard line, gain of one. And you look at this Alabama defense, and they're really on a mission. And you talk to Derek Thomas, and, and he'll tell you that he is a man on his mission. One of my last missions, he was saying the other day, like my dad. You know the story that his dad was on his last mission in 1972 in Vietnam in a B-52 bomber. And he was the last one out before it exploded, and he's never been seen again. Stacy Danley back in the ballgame now for Auburn on second down and nine from the 40. This ball's back in the air, incomplete. It looked like Willie Wyatt got a hand on it. I'm not quite sure. The big number 98 came through and had those arms up high, Doc. And these are a lot of guys with missions. We mentioned Derek Thomas. Well, how about Danley back in the game? And this time, and Slack is not a small quarterback. He's 6'3", six, 6'2 six, and a half, gets the ball up over the top. Still, it's batted down. Danley comes out of the game now. Vincent Harris replaces him. It's third down and nine. Auburn's only two for seven on third down conversions. Slack, plenty of time. Goes deep to Wake and incomplete out of bounds. Wake and was open. And you know what uh, Slack is facing? He's facing a soft zone defense because Alabama, with the loss of Gene Jelks, doesn't play much tight man-to-man -man anymore. So if he, can, if he can find those dead spots and make the completions, there's room for movement by the Auburn offense. Slack hasn't been able to do it. Shulman's punt is a high, wobbly punt. Murray Hill will take it at the 15. 44-yard punt, six-yard return. The tackle was made by Tim Garner. We've got 7.49 remaining third period. The wind has really picked up here at Legion Field, and it is blowing at the backs of Alabama, and that has been a factor. Alabama was just backed up in the last time they had the football. Chris Moore punted it 57 yards with the help of that wind, and now on first down at the 22, the wind is at Bama's back again. Smith with pressure, sacked by Stallworth, and that's Stallworth's fourth sack of the afternoon. Stallworth is going up a big up against a big offensive lineman, John Frumorgan, 6'6", 300 pounds. And what Stallworth is doing to him, he's just using his quickness and his speed to get around Frumorgan at will. They're going to have to help out on Stallworth, but then you got Rocker on the other side, so Alabama offense has a serious problem. Second down and 14, the ball on the 18. Smith again has Stallworth all over him. Great defensive play by Quentin Riggins, who takes Stewart down immediately. And the Alabama offense can't get anything going. You mentioned before, Stallworth went outside one time for the sack. This time, he faked outside, came inside, wasn't touched. Team 92 going in there, gets right to the quarterback, forces him to throw before he wanted to. And look at that great reaction by Quentin. Riggins. I tell you what, we talked about Stallworth's size 16 shoes, but he moves them pretty quickly. <laughs> he sure does. Third down and 20, the ball now on the 12. Flag is on the field. Benji Rowland takes down Smith, but there is a flag at about the 12-yard line. You see it there at the top of your screen. Defensive offside. And it's against Auburn. 
at the conclusion of today's CBS Sports College football broadcast. We will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates $1,000 to the scholarship fund of each school. And right now, I'd gamble to say that it'll be a defensive player. Ha-ha. <laughs> this is a defensive dandy, a gem. Third down and 15. And Alabama right now better find out where number 92 is, Ron Stallworth. It doesn't fool anybody. Again, Stallworth came through. He got a lot of help. And Castillo picks up maybe a yard. They're way short of a first down. Take a look at the right side of your screen, and you'll see Stallworth in an in-tackle game. He will come inside right there and runs right into the tackle. Benji Rowland goes to the outside. Stallworth just seems to be where the ball is all afternoon. Chris Moore gets off another booming punt. Wasden takes it as nailed. At the 37-yard line, and Wasden is hurt, and there's a flag. on the play. Tackle was made by Stacy Harrison. 51 yard punt. And it's clipping against the go. Wasden is hurt, but the clip was against Auburn. So Chris Moore has a 51 yard punt there. And his punt before that from his own end zone was 57. And they're checking Shane Wasden's right knee on the sidelines. He took a big hit on that punt return. Auburn now, eight penalties, 65 yards. First down and 10, the ball on the 23. Stacy Danley's first carry since he was hurt, and he's taken down rather rudely by Keith McCants. Here are the undefeated teams remaining, John. West Virginia, Arkansas, Notre Dame, and Southern Cal. Notre Dame and Southern Cal play tomorrow, and Arkansas plays here against Miami, and that should be a terrific football game. Special time, 12 o'clock Eastern time here on CBS. Arkansas unbeaten, playing Miami, and many feel that Miami still has the best talent in the country. Second down and nine, the ball on the 24. Slack, incomplete, intended for Lawyer Tillman. And Tim, you talk about that game tomorrow, Arkansas at Miami. Arkansas, of course, 10-0 on the year. And despite the fact that they averaged 33 points a game with their modified wishbone, I have to believe that Miami is going to give them all the game they'll want. You saw the numbers on Reggie Slack, but he's one for six in the second half, and he's missed his last five passes. And you know what? There's a disruption. I'm sorry. Pat Dye looks on. His offense has been disrupted. They've had some penalties. They just don't have it in sync at the moment. Reggie Slack doesn't. Third down and nine for Slack. Throws this one under the covers. There is another flag thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Reeves, the tight end, takes the ball to the 36-yard line. We'll wait to see what the flag is. Trying to hold him. And it's against Auburn. offensive line that's now nine penalties against the Tigers 75 yards Open the last 10 yards Holding. just by the shake of the head that'll say it all very uncharacteristic of a Pat Dye coach team but they're getting enormous enormous pressure from the Alabama defense Tommy Cole George Bethune really Wyatt in the middle they're having trouble handling Wyatt Four minutes, 35 seconds remain in the third period. Three wide receivers now for Auburn. Slack with plenty of time is going up top to Tillman. Tillman makes the catch. Not so much that Lawyer Tillman has great speed. His timing is part of the reason that makes him a great receiver. Lee Osmond 
was actually with him, but his timing is not that good. Take a look at the end of the play here. You see number 42 inside with pretty good position. He starts looking back, starts losing sight of the ball. Inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. The tackle made by Lee Osmond. And just as quick as Auburn was out of their offensive rhythm, they got back in it in a hurry with Tillman making the big catch, then Dantley busting up the left side for a good yardage. A gain of 18 for Danley. It'll be first down at the 15-yard line. A testimony to the importance of this game. Danley, Danley back in the game with that pink shoulder nerve after taking that big hit earlier. Timeout, Alabama. Boy, what a big play. Slack to Tillman. And he caught it over one of the interception leaders in the nation, Lee Osmond. Lee Osmond, you're absolutely right. He's one of those big uh, defensive backs, 6'5". He leads the SEC in interceptions. But that time, Tillman just showed his poise and his ability. Tomorrow night, it's the season premiere of the NBA on CBS. You'll see the two best teams in the lake clash in their first meeting since last season's championship series. Magic Johnson and the fast-breaking Los Angeles Lakers travel to Detroit to take on the explosive Pistons. That's tomorrow night, special time, 8.30 Eastern time, primetime basketball right here on CBS Sports. And what a championship series that was last year. Remember, it goes to seven games. L.A. finally beats Detroit. Woo. Hot stuff. It starts again. This is hot stuff. You get the feeling, though, Doc, that Alabama's offense has been so ineffective that it has not been able to move the football, that this is the football game right here with three minutes and 40 seconds still remaining in the third period. Alabama's defense is backed up against it. And they need a big play. Who gives them the big play? Number 55, Derek Thomas. And Ryan Harris in the eye formation. Straight ahead goes Harris. They'll mark it at the 13-yard line. And this is a situation where you don't exactly want to get too conservative. I mean, look at Auburn leading this game by a score of 8-3. to three. Five points isn't exactly a margin which you can be comfortable with. They really don't want to settle for a field goal. That would give them eight points. And, of course, Alabama with a touchdown and a two-point conversion would be able to tie. So, you know, Auburn's look thinking and looking touchdown right now. You saw number 21, Vincent Harris, come out of the ball game. Joseph and Dan Manala setbacks. On second and eight, slack throws complete to Reagan at the one. Excellent throw by Reggie Slack. Freddie Wagan simply went down, went deep into the end zone, and then came back to the ball. Charles Garner had reasonable coverage, but the ball was so, thrown so well. Watch him come back right there. Oh, question well, is, did he have a foot in bounds? I don't think he's in, John. Questionable call. Definitely questionable. I don't think he was in. First and goal at the one. There is a flag. Harris has the touchdown if it's against Alabama. But, oh, is that catch by Wigan worth another look? Of course, there's no instant replay in college football. We tend to get spoiled by that in the pros. Boy, it didn't look like Wigan had a foot in bounds. Auburn touchdown. They pick up the flag. Touchdown, Auburn. I want to take a look at that again. Reggie Slack threw the ball fairly well, but watch it at the end of this. Watch Wagan's feet. You make the call. No. Out. Left foot hit out of bounds. Boot point. Win Lyles on for the extra point. And it's good. So with 2.55 remaining in the third period, it's 15 to 3 Auburn. One more look at that catch. You decide for yourself now. Watch this. You only need Slow one down. foot in. You need one foot in. He catches the ball right now. His left foot, he appears to be in the air, and his first foot down is his left foot, which is well into the white, out of bounds. That's no catch. He doesn't have possession there. He's out of bounds. His other foot was up in the air as well. 
Here's the touchdown by Vincent Harris. Seventy-seven yard drive, seven plays, took two minutes and forty-three seconds. The big play slacked the Tillman fifty-one yards on third and eighteen. But this is the play they'll be talking about for a long, long time. Slack to Freddie Wagan. And one more time, Wagan. Now take a look. Remember, one foot has to be in bounds. He doesn't have. Now he has the ball. His right foot is up in the air. His left foot comes down out of bounds. William Kent. Turns it to the 25-yard line, and that's where Alabama will now have the football. 18-yard return. The tackle was made by Daryl Crawford. It's on plays like that, Tim. You wonder if instant replay makes sense. You know, and there's been a lot of controversy about it. That one would seem fairly clear. Of course, it's, it's not even a question in college football. Makes sense to me. Here's the scoring drive we were just telling you about. Vincent Harris, one-yard touchdown. And it's 15-3 to Auburn with 2 minutes and 48 seconds remaining third period. Of course, the big play in that drive was a long pass to Lawyer Tillman. Again, there's pressure on Smith, and he goes down. This time, the pressure came from Brian Smith and David Rocker. And that's the sixth sack of the day. And Pat Dye is in great position now because his defenders can simply say, all right, we're ahead now, 15 to three, and let's just let it all hang out and go after an immobile quarterback with a damaged knee. Marco Battle comes to the bottom of the screen. Payne to the top, second and 15. Shotgun formation for Smith. He's got nervous feet back there and throws this one incomplete to Wayne Shaw. Right now, let's go downstairs. Here's James Brown. JB? All right, Timmy, I'm sure Coach Curry would love to have these two guys, the two best players on both sides of the ball. Gene Jelks to my right, Bobby Humphrey to my left. You guys gave a pregame speech to the team. They were fired up playing well prior to this last touchdown. What did you say? Well, basically, we just told them, you know, that we wish that we could play in this iron bowl, the 53rd iron bowl, but unfortunately, we can't, so we just went in there and gave them a little pep talk to support them and then let them know that we'll be here. We'll come right back to Bobby Humphrey after this, Timmy. Third and 15. Smith drills this one to Pierre Goode at the 38-yard line. First down, Alabama. A gain of 19, JB. All right, Bobby Humphrey, foot surgery three weeks ago. You were a Heisman candidate coming into the season. The question is, will you come back next year or will you turn pro? Well, basically, right now, I'm just waiting out to see what the foot is going to do. And, you know, I sat on it the first six weeks to see what it hit on its own, and it didn't happen. Then it didn't heal, so I had to go on and have the surgery. Well, all right, let's go back upstairs to Tim. All-American tailback, Heisman Trophy candidate, Bobby Humphrey. First down at the 39, shotgun formation for the Crimson Tide. This is Castillo. Big hold to the 46-yard line. And the Alabama offense now starts to come to life. And what a clutch completion by David Smith only moments ago to Pierre Goode. But you look at David Castillo and, you know, you see Bobby Humphrey. For five years, he was getting pushed around because his clothes were getting stepped on. And generally, he was abused because his locker was next to Bobby Humphrey. And everyone used to rush by Castillo to get to Humphrey. Finally, he gets his chance after five years to play here and start for Alabama. Second down and three following their longest run of the afternoon by Castillo play action for Smith and again there's pressure dangerous pass in the direction of Lamont Russell intended for Russell double header day Sunday afternoon on CBS these are some of the games you'll be seeing Phoenix at Philadelphia is an early game some of you will see Green Bay at Chicago and the Bears are hot Tampa Bay at Atlanta is another game and the Rams at Denver is the second game of the doubleheader. Or some of you will see San Francisco at San Diego. Doubleheader day. The NFL on CBS. Third and three. Castile in motion. Three-step drop. It's intended for Payne incomplete. Payne was open. But the pressure was on Smith. And it appeared as though Payne may have slowed down a little bit. This is simply a quick takeoff doesn't allow the pressure to get to Smith. He just flips it out, slightly overthrown as he tries to get it in between the short and the deep men of Auburn. So Chris Moore comes on, and he's been a hero this afternoon. His last two punts, 57 and 51 yards. Has the wind to his back. 
Horn. Wasden is back in the ball game, and he won't have a chance to return this. Wasden, who was shaken up on the last punt, has no return here, and they mark this one all the way up to the 21-yard line. Joe Tucker. War Eagle. <laughs> well, his nickname is the Tiger. Battle cry is War Eagle. They got it from Oliver Goldsmith's poem, The Deserted Village, where crouching tigers wait their hapless prey. Sweet Auburn, the loveliest village of the plains. War Eagle. First down, the ball on the 21 now for the Tigers. A gain of two goes Stacy Danley. What's your feeling, Doc, as the third period comes to a close here with 45 seconds remaining? My feeling is that uh, Alabama has lost the momentum. You look for rhythm in games, and right now it's all Auburn. The big play from Reggie Slack to Lawyer Tillman took the steam out of the Alabama defense. And then that questionable call to completion to Wagan down by the goal line and then the final touchdown. So it's lost some of their steam on defense. Second down and nine, the ball on the 22. Danley on the delay and he's hit immediately by Thomas. Danley now 18 carries. 73 yards. But if there's a guy who can put steam back into this defense, it's Derek Thomas, the all-time sack record leader in... Sports presents college football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. Platters, there's a whole lot of nothing going on. Platters. And by ShopVac wet-dry vacuums. If it doesn't say ShopVac, keep shopping. With 11.25 remaining in the first period, Auburn took advantage of a short Bama punt. Win Lyle with a 25-yard field goal. It was 3-0 Auburn. Alabama's Phillip Doyle then hit a 20-yard field goal to tie it at 3 all. With 3.18 remaining in the first period, Ron Stallworth sacked David Smith to make it 5-3 Auburn. And then in the second quarter, Win Lyle hit a 23-yard field goal after a 51-yard drive took it to the six. It was 8-3 Auburn at the half. Then the one-yard touchdown by Vincent Harris set up a controversial catch by Freddie Wagan in that drive, set that touchdown up, and that's where we are. 15-3 Auburn in the fourth period. Third down and 11, the ball on the 19. Stacey Gannon alone setback. Three wide receivers, four slack. And he's going deep. Lawyer Tillman can't hold it. It went right through his hands. Here is that controversial play one more time. You'll see Reggie Slack rolling out. That's Freddie Wagan. Now the question is, as we roll it slowly along, Freddie Wagan right here is catching the ball. And if we stop it, you'll see his back foot is up in the air. And the other foot came down out of bounds. Hill fields this punt at the 35, needs a block, gets out to the 46, and Auburn will have, or Alabama rather, will have good field position. Darrell Crawford made the tackle, 46-yard punt, 10-yard return. Let's take a look at that again. We'll get a better look at Reggie Slack. This is a play that set up the touchdown. And now watch it. Freddie Wagan coming back to the ball along the sideline. Right now, he is catching the ball. But you see this foot is up in the air. And this foot, his left foot, comes down out of bounds. So it shouldn't be a catch. But it is. They'll be talking about this play for years. Part of iron ball history right now. And Bill Curry cannot be happy about that. Five-yard face mask penalty against Auburn. Moves it up even that much closer. It's first down and 10. The ball at midfield. Smith. He's going deep, and it's almost intercepted. Great coverage by Shad Morris, who was just playing free out there. Read the ball and almost had the interception. I don't think Alabama can lose its composure now and go deep every time. You see those total yards has really been domination if you look at the stats by Auburn, 314 yards, Alabama against the number one defense in the country, 151 yards. At times, David Smith was able to move the ball, but now the rush is simply getting to him. Battle and pain, the two receivers there at the bottom of your screen on second down and 10. Smith throws this one out to Castile and a poor pass. Castile has to dive for it, and he loses yardage. Smith's pass to Castile is complete. 
That was an interesting play. In that play, the nose guard, Benji Roland, number 96, actually was playing pass defense, as they ask him to do from time to time. The big man dropping back from his nose tackle to position to play in the middle of the field like a linebacker. Wayne Shaw comes in and replaces Robert Stewart for Alabama. Third and 16, three wide receivers, shotgun formation. Smith with pressure, ducks out of this one. Should be a flag there is. It'll be pass interference. Pass went to Lamont Russell and John Wiley was out there covering. And Wiley's going to be called for pass interference. Defensive interference. Be an automatic first down to spot the foul. That's against Wiley. John Wiley did not look back for the ball, and he actually impeded Russell from catching it, thus the penalty. Pierre Goode comes back into the ball game now for Alabama. He's a 4-2-40 guy. Auburn, 11 penalties, 95 yards. It's first down, the ball at the 44. Turner and Castillo are flanking Smith in the shotgun. On the de little delay to Turner, and Alabama just cannot run the ball against Auburn. But they're doing some interesting things from a strategy standpoint. They're going to the shotgun to take a little pressure off David Smith. We mentioned his injured knee. He's not that mobile. They're also running little plays like that, little draws, little traps, to try to keep that rush off balance. They trail by 12, 13-15 remaining in the ball game. It's second down and nine, tied. Ball's loose. Smith is having all kinds of problems this afternoon. He's thrown two interceptions. He was caught for a safety. This time he fumbles the snap. You know, you think of Alabama quarterbacks, you think of some great ones, the Bart Stars, the Joe Namath, the Kenny Stablers, the, the Richard Todds. Certainly David Smith is not in that mold. We talked to Bill Curry and he said, you know what? He's just got that courage, that leadership, and he gives his team confidence. It's not so much his talent, it's just his head. He'll throw the right person at the right time in the right place. Right now, he's just feeling overwhelming pressure. Third down and 10 from the 44. Play action. Smith this time with time, and he hits Marco Battle, and Battle has a first down inside the 30. Brian Smith made the tackle. And that's what I call an experienced quarterback. You saw him, Tim. He was looking to the far side of the field for a receiver. He was covered. He looked for his second receiver, couldn't find him. Finally, comes back to Marco Battle over the middle for the first down. Todd Richardson comes into the ball game for Alabama. Never even went to the 100. He's at the bottom of your screen. The first down at the 29. Pierre Goods at the top of your screen, and both can fly. This is Castillo. Castillo breaks the tackle inside the 25 and dives to the 23. Greg Staples made the tackle. Coming up later tonight on CBS, Beauty and the Beast, followed by a Circus of the Stars featuring ringmasters B. Arthur, Martin Mull. Performers include Mary Hart, Harvey Corman, Kathy Rigby, Emma Sams, and O.J. Simpson. That's all coming up later tonight on CBS. Second down and four now from the 23. Shaw gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Quentin Riggins makes the stop. Very difficult to run against this Auburn defense, as Alabama is experienced. Only 11 yards total rushing on the ground. Auburn up to 100 yards. They've had a fairly balanced attack, Auburn has, although they've been slightly more successful throwing the ball. Big third down play here for Alabama. Third down and four. Smith has pressure. Makes the catch. And what a catch by Lamont Russell, but there is a flag in the backfield. And it's in the area where they normally call holding. Holding against Alabama will negate that play. And the offensive line holding during the pass. Takes it all the way back to the 33-yard line. 
If you take a look at the left side of your screen, you might be able to see this holding penalty. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of arms grabbing on. That's a mugging, not a holding. <laughs> Third down and 14 at the 32-yard line. Five defensive backs now for Auburn. Shotgun formation for Alabama. Here comes the pressure. Smith bounces it in the direction of Marco Battle. Smith had room. If only he could run. If only he could run, but he can't. And that time, he did what a quarterback should do. The pressure was coming around. The pocket was starting to close, so he stepped up, and there was an open area to throw in. He just threw a ground ball. There's a decision to be made here with 10.32 remaining in the ball game. Fourth down and 13. Ball on the 32-yard line. And Bill Curry's signaling for a timeout. And why not go for it when you're down by a score of 15-3 to against the best defense in the country? How many opportunities do you get, you know, on the 32-yard, 33-yard line? So I have to agree with uh, Bill Curry. Alabama takes the timeout. They now have one remaining. And trail by 12. Ten minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the ball game. It's 15 to three, Auburn. Ooh. Ten minutes, 32 seconds remain. Bill Curry has changed his mind. The offense for Alabama has come off the field. Philip Doyle, his place kicker, has come on. It will be a 49-yard field goal attempt. Doyle is four for 12 when it's more than 40 yards. Good snap. This kick is long enough, but it's off to the side, and it's no good. So the Auburn defense has held. Some excitement along the Auburn sideline there, but Pat Dye kept his cool. I mean, my feeling on that, Tim, was this. Look, if you make it, you're down by nine. You still need a couple of scores. You're playing against a great defensive team. You don't get that many opportunities. And plus, a 49-yard field goal, what are the percentages of making that? Stacey Danley on first down to the 37-yard line. Tackle made by Keith McCamps. And I also feel there's times when a coach has to show confidence in his team. I remember Paterno talking about it a few weeks ago where you have to step up and say, okay, guys, I have the confidence in you right at this moment to make this critical play and take it in. Bill Curry thought about it for a moment, called the timeout, and then changed his mind. I wonder if he's second-guessing himself right now on the sidelines. He's deep in thought. He's also 0 for Auburn. Has never beaten the Tigers. Second down and four. James Joseph to the 40-yard line and continues to push the pile to the 41. And left tackle. They make three yards. Another reminder tomorrow night, it's the season premiere of the NBA on CBS. We want you to make special note of the time. Prime time game, 8.30 Eastern time. The Lakers and the Pistons right here on CBS Sports. Chance to see Magic Kareem and company. It's third down and one for the Tigers at the 41. This is Daniel. And he's close. I think he got it. But there is a two-yard gain, and they'll give him the first down. Tackle was made by Keith McCants. Take a look at Derek uh, Thomas right here, number 55. Watch him right here. He doesn't like what's going on because he's being blocked. Puts an elbow into Jim Thompson's back. Ooh, Derek. Now those are, carried away now. Doc, those are two guys that had a lot of words back and forth this week, too, via the media. Two seniors battling in the Iron Bowl. I mean, the, this game has so much meaning. It's hard to describe. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You really do have to take sides if you live in Alabama. You can't be on the fence. It's either an Auburn or an Alabama fan. First down, Joseph cuts it back inside, gets to the 44-yard line. Again, Keith McCants is there. McCants, we should note, is also playing hurt. He has a shoulder injury but continues to play. You know, it's an interesting story, uh, James Joseph, the uh, the fullback 
for Auburn. You know, he gained a little bit of weight after he uh, had, an, had an injury, and he started putting on a little bit of weight, and he said, wait a minute. I knew I was in deep trouble and slowing down and had too much weight on me when the offensive lineman started challenging me in 40-yard dashes. Needless to say, he's lost the weight, and he is the starting fullback for Auburn. Second down and nine, the ball on the 44 for Auburn. Slack tries to keep it as a flag at the line of scrimmage. Reeves makes the catch, but the ball was dead before the play. Charles Gardner was the defensive back in the area. Pull the ball, ball snap, dead ball, ball start, illegal movement, the offensive line. Penalty number 12 against Auburn for 100 yards. And despite the disruptions that penalty, penalties caused, Auburn's still been able to dominate this game on the ground. For Alabama to win right now, they must make something happen. You know, Derek Thomas has to unleash himself, cause a fumble, get an interception, get the ball back somehow. Clock continues to tick, 7.25 remaining in the ball game. 15-3, Auburn, second down and 14. Ball on the 39 for the Tigers. Slack with all kinds of time, and he throws this one out of bounds. He just didn't want to wait any longer. Gives you a sense of how much confidence they have in Reggie Slack. They're willing to throw the ball at this point in the game. They're ahead 15 to 3, a little over seven minutes left. The clock becomes their ally, yet, you know, they're allowing Reggie Slack to throw the ball. And wisely, as you said, Timmy, throws it out of bounds when he couldn't find a receiver. Slack backed up Jeff Berger in this game the last two years, finally gets his chance to start against Alabama, and he's been impressive. Third down at 14 now. Again, there's very little pressure on Slack. Throws this one deep, incomplete. It was intended for Tillman, and there is a flag. The flag came late. And John Magnum was the defensive back in that area. John Magnum made a good play on the ball. It's a question of whether it was a simultaneous hit or he got there a little before the ball arrived. Defense has been apparent. In excess of 15 yards, it'll be 15 yards, first down. Oh, my. I have to take a look at this again. Of course, as an old defensive back, I tend to favor the defensive back. Take a look at the right here. See when the ball arrives? Boy, it seems to me like it was arriving the same time as the defensive back. Of course, I must admit, Tim, I am a little bit biased. <laughs> so am I, but that was a perfect play. Great reaction by Magnum. I don't think there should have been a flag there either. I'd have to agree with you. Take a look at a good ball reaction. The ball is getting there. Magnum gets there at the exact same time to break it up. Joseph loses a yard. I think that was a good defensive play. Derek Thomas made the tackle here. And Derek Thomas has been all over the field today. Not quite as dominant as, he, as he's been in other games, but boy, he just makes plays all the time. People say that he can't play the run that well. That time he shed a blocker and got into the backfield to make the tackle on Joseph. Anybody that wears a t-shirt under that jersey that says sack demon, he's the captain of the defense. You've got to appreciate him. And I talked to the pro scouts, as a matter of fact, from Buffalo, and they say that this man is probably as good as Cornelius Bennett. And we'll go in the top five picks. Second and 12, and Joseph carries the ball to the 44-yard line. Center. So it'll yards. bring up third down for Auburn. You know, you talk about Derek Thomas. Uh, he was telling us here the other day that a wreath arrived at his dormitory. A funeral wreath. It said this will be the funeral of Derek Thomas as Auburn beats Alabama. And he said, I didn't even know I was sick. He said, I don't appreciate that either. It's that guy sending me a wreath. But they took it in good spirit, and they put it right up in the dormitory hall. Keith McCants was shaken up on that last play for Alabama. We told you the McCants is playing with a shoulder injury playing hurt and he's not getting off the, off the, playing field the artificial surface all this time bill curry all coming out to field. attend to his player and he does this often one of his players is hurt and he comes out to see if in fact they're hurt badly he cares a great deal about his players legion field in birmingham alabama tim brant john dockery with you one of the great football rivalries in this country auburn and alabama the Tigers lead it 15 to 3. 
been a fantastic day weather-wise for football and two marvelous defenses playing here this afternoon. And you talk about the importance for Auburn. The Sugar Bowl is on the line here today. If Auburn should keep their lead and go on to win, they would be 6-1 and one, tied with LSU. And being the higher-ranked team in the country, they would go to the Sugar Bowl. So this is a big day, co-title and the trip to the Sugar Bowl. And it's not just, you know, the importance of winning a title. It's also a lot of money involved. A difference between the Hall of Fame Bowl and the Sugar Bowl of $1.6 million. So a lot riding on this for the Tigers. 15-3 Auburn. We'll be back. Fifteen to three Auburn. Six minutes and eighteen seconds remain. You get a look at Keith McCants. They helped him off the field. He had fifteen tackles today. It'll be second down and three Auburn. The ball on the 39-yard line. Vincent Harris, Stacy Danley are the backs in the eye. Danley close to a first down. Tackle made by Willie Wyatt. And left tackle. Play made two yards. And the clock becomes all important as we go under six minutes here at Legion Field. Lawyer Tillman goes out of the ball game, as does Stacy Danley now. Vincent Harris comes back into the game and he joins James Joseph in the backfield. Third and one. Joseph has the first down, but there's a flag. And I think it's going to be holding against Auburn. Tackle made by Lee Osmond. Holding, offense. That is a break for Alabama. Otherwise, it would have been a first down. And the clock continuing to run. They must get the ball back. They're down by 12 points. Declared down in 12. Well, the key point is, as you said, it stops the clock. Stops the clock. They're down by 12 points. They need two scores. They need two touchdowns. 13th penalty of the day for Auburn. 110 yards against the Tigers. What a year it's been for Pat Dye. 9-1 on the year. 5-1 in the SEC. But for one point loss to LSU, this would be an undefeated Auburn Tiger team. Just voted coach of the year by the UPI. Third down and 12. Slack on the play action is under a lot of pressure. And he throws it incomplete. Right now, let's go downstairs to James Brown. JB? All right, Timmy, you will not see Keith McCants the rest of the ball game. He did, in fact, hurt his shoulder. It's a strained muscle on the left side of his shoulder. As you well know, he's had a problem with the right shoulder all season long. You can see the brace on the right side of his shoulder. The ice pack is on the left side. He's out of the game. Let's go back upstairs to Timmy. All right, James, thank you very much. So with McCants out, Vantrese Davis comes in. So Greg Gilbert, Vantrese Davis, and William Amalong are the linebackers now for Alabama. Fourth down and 12, the ball on the 48. And the Tigers will punt. Brian Schulman gets a low snap. And puts a tail wagger high that Hill will fair catch inside the 10. And I'm not sure that was the right call. But there is a flag. And there may be interference called against Auburn. They may not have given him the room to make the catch. 43-yard punt. Violation of the two-yard circle, five-yard penalty against the kicking team. First down. That's exactly what it is. You must give the punt return man room to catch the ball. Two yards, radius around. That was the call. A little break for Alabama. they got to get points on the board in a hurry. You cannot interfere. You have to stay without that two-yard circle. Five minutes remaining in the ball game. 15 to three, Auburn. Slack, 12 of 25, 214 yards. Six Auburn quarterback sacks, two for Alabama. Total yards, well, it's been a mismatch. 335 yards, Alabama, 167. First down, Alabama at the 11. David Smith drills this ball to Marco Battle at the 26-yard line, first down tied. Simply a turn-in pattern underneath the zone. Smith throws this ball as well as any ball that he throws. Gain of 15. Alabama in a hurry-up offense. Again, they stay in the shotgun. Smith has pressure backside. 
throws this one to his big tight end, Howard Cross. And high C goes out of bounds at the 29-yard line. And that's a key element. Howard Cross got out of bounds, even a short game. And David Smith doesn't have all the weapons that you need to come from behind. He mean, he's not a, a very mobile quarterback with a big arm. He doesn't have great speed on the outside, although Pierre Good, number two, hasn't done much, but has the great speed. Second down and seven for Smith. Again, this pressure straight up the middle. This time, it's complete to Russell. Russell breaks free at the 50, keeps his feet to the 40, needs a block to the 35-yard line. Lamar Russell is finally taken down by Carlo Cheatham. A gain of 35, and there's another Alabama player injured on the field. Lamont Russell is kind of a cross between a wide receiver and a tight end. He's six feet one, about 200 pounds. Here, he does some running after he catches the ball. It's a very simple pattern, and you have to admire David Smith. He waits, he waits, and then he just finds Russell over the middle. Then, some fancy footwork. Look at those black high tops that he's wearing, too. Whoa, keeps his balance for a big game for Alabama. If he had kept his balance there, it was wide open. Pierre Goud is the injured player that we told you about. And he gets up now and makes his way off the field. Pierre Goud, one of the mysteries around Alabama. Great speed and talent, but hasn't really fulfilled his potential. People say he has trouble. He's a straight line runner. Again, no huddle. First down at the 35. Smith now 17 of 32 for 222 yards, but he does have two interceptions. Throws this ball to Russell. And Russell down to almost the 30. Greg Staples makes the tackle. Clock continues to roll. 4.05 remaining in the ballgame. The philosophy of the Auburn defense at the moment is let him catch the ball in front of us. Don't give them the quick score. Second down and five. Smith, Russell, to the 13-yard line. Ball is loose, but he was out of bounds. Greg Staples takes him out. A gain of 18. Three minutes and 44 seconds left as they score here, Doc. It gets interesting. And what a workmanlike drive, like a surgeon dissecting his patient. Right now, David Smith is dissecting that Auburn defense with short, high-percentage passes. Kevin Turner comes out of the ball game. Robert Stewart comes in for Alabama. First down shotgun formation. Smith throws to the corner. Touchdown, Alabama. of the day 12 yard touchdown it's now 15 to 9 with 323 remaining in the ball game philip doyle for the extra point and it's good three minutes 23 seconds remain in the ball game it's auburn 15 alabama 10 Takes their kicker out, Philip Doyle. Instead, they replace him with number eight, Alan Ward, and they line up for the onside kick with three minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the ball game. Auburn gets it at the 47-yard line. It was James Joseph, so Auburn put in its onside receive team. James Joseph, the fullback, makes the catch successfully. Here's that touchdown moments ago. David Smith beat you with his mind, his presence of mind. He knows where all the receivers are on the field. Here he's flushed out of the pocket. A lot of pressure by Benji Rowland. Throws the ball all the way across field, and then Greg Payne is over there in the far corner of the end zone. Watch how he drags his feet for the touchdown right there. Touchdown, Alabama. First down at the 47. Danley, left side, big hole to the 42-yard line. That was a wise move going for the onside kick with 3.20 left because a field goal doesn't hurt you. You're down by five. You need a touchdown. You must get the ball back. You're playing against a solid team. You don't want to give it to them. 
and let them run some time off the clock. And that's what Bill Curry is worried about right now, whether his defense can stiffen and get the ball back in a hurry. There's only one timeout left for Bill Curry in Alabama. Dan Lee, 23 yards, or 23 carries, rather, 85 yards. It's second down and five, and Dan Lee is the setback in the eye. This is Dan Lee. Cuts back against the grain. He's inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. He'll be a yard shy of the first. And what a valuable player Stacy Danley is right now. He's one of those athletes who gets stronger as the game goes on. When he's in his 25th, 26th, 30th carry, he just seems to get stronger because he's so well-conditioned. That tackle was made by Keith McCants. We were told he wasn't going to return. That's the kind of game it is. He's suited back up. He's back in the ball game. It's third down and two. It's interesting. McCants is back. Danley was hurt earlier. He's back in the game. Slack on third down and two. Has the completion to his tight end at the 35-yard line. First down, Auburn. Big catch by Walter Reeves. And an interesting call by Pat Dye showing a lot of confidence in Reggie Slack. He doesn't just run it into the line and try to be stopped. Instead, it's a bootleg and just a nice, soft touch to Reeves, who makes the catch before going out of bounds for the first down. Number three, Charles Gardner ran him out of bounds. One minute, 59 seconds remain. The Auburn lead is five. The pitch back to Stacey Danley, big hole right side, inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. He'll be close to another Tiger first down. Keith McCants and Lee Osmond made the tackle. And Pat Dye blames himself for that loss at LSU, the only loss by the Tigers. He said, I got a little too conservative. I didn't go for it. And, of course, LSU came back, the late score, touchdown by Tommy Hodson. That's the only loss Auburn has. Here, Pat Dye showed a little creativity on that bootleg. Slack with the completion to Reeves, and then Danley with a good run right there. Danley now has 25 carries, 97 yards. Second down and one. Joseph gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. He'll be close to a first down, depending on the mark. Tim, you have to use, wonder when they're going to use their timeout right here. I know. You don't want to take it home with you. It does you no good. Come on, make the tackle. Timeout Alabama. So the Crimson Tide takes its final timeout of the game. And with 107 remaining, they really need to turn things over now. And Bill Curry, of course, has never beaten Pat Dye, nor has he beaten Auburn. Right now, he's in a tough spot as Alabama trails Auburn 15 to 10. One minute, seven seconds remain. Auburn with a five-point lead now only needs to hold on to the football and melt the clock. Of course, uh, yes, to win this game. And, and that would mean that, uh, of course, Alabama is already going to the John Hancock Sun Bowl to play Army. But it would mean that the Sugar Bowl would be Auburn versus Florida. Hall of Fame Bowl would be LSU versus Syracuse. A lot of LSU players out there watching this game hoping for a miracle here, but it's not going to happen, I don't believe, as we approach the one-minute mark. No timeouts left for Alabama. They can't stop the clock. And the Tigers start to celebrate. to do it. Pat Dye, the SEC Coach of the Year, as Tigers have won two titles the last five years. We'll get another one here today. His overall record, 125-45-3. In his eighth year at Auburn. The Auburn Tigers will share the lead in the SEC, the championship with LSU. They're going to the Super Bowl. One of the most valuable players of the game, Derek Thomas, the outside linebacker from Alabama. And from Auburn, Stacey Danley, the tailback. Thomas with 13 tackles and two sacks. Danley, 25 carries, 97 yards. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be notated by Chevrolet, the each school's general scholarship fund, to further assist 
qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Right now, let's go down to James Brown, who's with head coach Pat Dye. All right, Timmy, thank you very much. Close to your third consecutive Iron Bowl victory, and next year, history will be made if you go to Auburn to play this match. Well, you know, we're looking forward to the game coming to Auburn, and this is a great win here tonight for our kids, and really and truly coming into this football game. I don't like to come into a ball game. We were favored, and and Alabama had been through some hard times. They had all of the emotions and the psychological thing in their favor. And they've got an outstanding football team. Offensively, they're struggling a little bit, but defensively, they're a great football team. So I knew it would be, I knew it'd be close. And uh, I might have, you know, I might have perhaps, you know, from a from a pretty standpoint, it wasn't a very pretty win. You know, Lawyer Tillman comes up with some big plays, and so. But Reggie Slack did some great things for us tonight under a lot of pressure. And uh, but the penalties, you know, just and and then he kind of got sloppy in the second half on both sides. So. But the bottom line is you did win. Coach we did win, and we might have happy about that. Your team is now tied with LSU for the SEC title. LSU beat you guys in head-to-head -head competition. But who should go to the well, Super Bowl? You know, I think that I think if you look at uh, if you say head-to-head, -head, sure LSU should go. But you look at every other game that we played against common opponents in the Southeastern Conference, we beat every one of them worse than LSU did. So, I mean, I don't know, and I really don't care. We won this game here tonight. I'd be happy to go to Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa. Last question. Stacy Danley came out from being knocked out and played a super game in the second half. Well, he's a very courageous young man and a great, great tailback. Thank you. Well, all right. Pat Dye, winning coach for Auburn. Let's go back upstairs to Tim Brent. All right, James. Auburn moved the ball 143 yards rushing. Bama only 14 yards, Doc. You know, I think Pat Dye put it very well when he said it was an ugly win, but they got some big plays from Reggie Slack to Lawyer Tillman. The defense was all over David Smith. They dominated uh, an outstanding game by the best defense in the country some opportunistic offense the Tigers have won three in a row in this series now for the first time since White Eisenhower was president of the United States in the 1950s and uh, it's a great win for them today they go to the Sugar Bowl um, the Auburn Tigers do for the Crimson Tide and they have Texas A&M and then the Sun Bowl versus Army all right so Auburn wins it and once again, the final score is Auburn 15, Alabama 10. There's more exciting college football action tomorrow when number eight Arkansas takes on number three Miami at a special time.